Now we are goddamn talking. If we blow the three coolant containers, this whole place will go up like a rocket. This place is crawling with the process. Be careful, ladies. Yes, well, I've just received a pretty significant upgrade. actually have something that can deal with things. I haven't found any of the containers. They must be somewhere near you. It'll be risky, but you'll have to exit the battle armor to handle this situation. Actually, we can block them from coming up the stairs just by parking the battle armor right on the stairs. Come on, work with me here. Oh, great. You're gonna force me to dump it here. Fine. Fuck you, game. Yeah, like I said, nanotech soldiers are extremely tanky, and we haven't even run into the nanotech elites. Thank God, most of the time we have to deal with them, we're wearing the battle armor. Olaf wasn't exaggerating when he said that the nanotech elites make us obsolete. Must mean you found one of the containers. Two more to go. Uh, yeah, get me, get me back in the fucking battle armor. gonna spawn in Jesus found the main lab it's got to be near you somewhere yeah, you think being in battle armor would make this section easier but it's the times they force you to leave the battle armor that bone you over You can only leave it when they let you, either, too. Like, I'd love to get some meds right now. That's the thing I'd love to do. But the game isn't gonna let me, because I can't leave until it lets me leave. it default me to that thing? Where? Yes, thank you. Okay, it's just gonna spawn them in when I place the charge, isn't it? Because they're not coming out through the door, so it's just gonna spawn them in. Half my health. In the main lab area. Yes, the process that we encountered before were the processed civilians. They're the result of failed experiments. These are the processed grunts. These are actual... Well, not these guys. Oh. 
Gotta aim for their head. Because they're just that goddamn tanky. Oh, this one we can just... This place is getting unstable. Well, that was simpler. Yeah. Well, Tangier, I thought the whole purpose of destroying the cooling system was to make this place unstable. Up like a rocket, you said. I don't know how I'm pushing this button. Maybe it's remote access? Here's the interesting part. This end of this elevator and the last one we were on has a curvature to it, whereas this end is flat. The last time the back end opened once we reached the top, and here the front's gonna open again. Consistency in the elevators, if you please. Don't open that. If you think it's a spare suit, there's a guy in that. He'll try to murder you. I'd like to introduce you to my nano elite. They are the ultimate warriors processed with none of the defects of previous generations. They make you obsolete. He's not kidding either. These things are, are goddamn durable. I thought the previous nanotech runs so durable. These things are even worse. Um. Yeah, there's. They park themselves in the worst place imaginable. Because you can't geomod around them. But if you touch them in this thing, you'll kill them. At least I think you can't geomod your way around them. No, apparently that's that's just an indestructible wall. Yep, no choice. That's just bad design there. Aim for the head on these things. You'll note they have the same sort of uh, pain sounds as the Sopod Elite Guard. I don't know if that means the Sopod Elite Guard were earlier version of these guys in actual suits. Or if that means that basically it's like a, a voice uh, masking thing. Ah, that was on me. Well, my heroics should still be, um, high. I don't know how to check. Because that's the problem. There's no bo- you get better heroics for more bonus objectives, but this is the chapter where you're most likely to kill civvies. Which is kind of bullshit. Oh, do over. Oh, he looks pissed. If you think the is ugly, imagine how tough you look when I'm done with it. Yeah, 
Yeah, they only let you run him down to about half of his health this way. Then he F's off and you have to fight him on foot with conventional weapons. Weirdly no support spawned in this time, that's weird. Last time there were a couple of uh, elite nanotech soldiers. So once he's down to about a quarter of his health, he'll go from mainly trying to heavy machine gun you to trying to rocket you. Yeah, he'll push on you at some point. Ow! Die! So a weapon that hits harder than the heavy machine gun. These, but I gotta get right down his throat. I'm not sure that's gonna end well for me. Yeah, especially when he stuns me like that. Well, I am doing damage. There's not much. Explosive damage with a headshot. I have actually been killed when that thing falls over at the end of the fight. A little warning for the player, like a couple of explosions before it just immediately crushes you might have been a nice adi addition. But, uh, what do I know? I'm not a game developer. I mean, you go through probably the second hardest fight in this game, if not the hardest, and then they fucking cheap shot you because you didn't realize they were gonna just destroy a pillar right next to you. But no more fancy powered armor. Now we have to deal with the nanotech elite. Oh, natural. I'm on Molov. He's not getting away. Something's really wrong down there. What the hell did you do? What you fucking hey, told me to do, Tangier? We've got to get out of this thing. He's got the nano cell. We must 
destroy it. Alias, we're up in the chest of the statue. Move. Okay, I'm gonna chill here until my health regenerates. Good for you, bro. There'll be more nanotech guards up ahead. At least they're not going to endlessly respawn. Yeah, I'm we going, Tangier. This whole this game falls apart in the end a little bit. You die here now. Sopot statue would be your tomb. Well, Molov had to destroy it anyway. He would need to replace it with his own statue. Shrike, hold your fire. You are shooting at me, you idiot. Another breather. I don't know how many if they're gonna give me medkits for the fight or not. Strike? Pick me up now! Negative. You made a serious error. Strike! Pick me up now! And I won't kill you! I have Molov cornered! Uh huh? Only way to kill these things without using a million things of ammo. Almost to the hilt. Remember, Mola, we don't stop fights. We finish them. You heroes better get up here before I save the world. There we go. I expect many two-overs on this. This boss fight sucks. If not for love of Sopot, come, then for your own sake, today's sacrifice brings tomorrow's abundance. Goodbye, Alias! Fight! Fight, I say! Do not tell me that we cannot! We must! We must! The Red Faction. We cannot tolerate these traitors in our midst. She was always better at flirting than fighting. Once I dispose of you, my elite guard will recover the nano cell, and I will rule the Commonwealth. Red Faction fanatics would enslave our sons and prostitutes. I never Trusted you, I so love the patriarch of the Commonwealth. I dedicate myself to the protection of my Yeah, this thing is pretty durable. I didn't fight so much, so that a greater evil could take his place. Love of Sopot means love of country. Really bad time to be a fucking one tap. Secret experiment. Mutant so 
soldiers to scare the naive and subvert the state. Shit. Hey, it's uh, calculation. Stop. Let them lie to you. You know better. See you, medkit. I'm going for it. Yes! First try! First try! Eat shit and die, Molov! Woo! I just had to B hop in AD. Fuck! Oh, I feel like a tryhard piece of shit. It's dirty, I'm gonna have to wash it off. should still get the good end. Yes, the endings change based on your alignment. Alias accepted a position as military advisor to the newly formed Red Faction government. When he retired many years later, his memoirs remained on the bestseller list for 17 weeks and were eventually made into a video game. Funny. Tangier survived her fall and was rescued by a passing boat. Eventually, she emigrated to Mars, where she became executive vice president of security for the reorganized Altor Mining Company. Shrike remained in the Commonwealth and married into a family of circus performers. Eventually, he made his fortune as the star attraction at a new adventure theme park built on the remains of Sopot Island. That, that ties in much better with how Shrike was originally characterized. Um, so sh I played the demo for this, and Shrike was not originally voiced by Jason Statham. He was voiced by somebody else, and the whole notion of a madman with a taste for speed, he actually sounded crazy. Like, he was in dogfights with Sopot forces, and he's like, Shrike sees baddies below. <laughs> he literally sounded like the Joker, okay? And I, that just changed when Statham voiced Shrike. Uh, <laughs> I make of that what you will. But yes, that ending fits in much better with him actually being a little <laughs> crazy as opposed to this dissonant thing where he's informally a madman with a taste for speed, that he's crazy. But yet, he's basically, he just, he's the transporter. That, that's literally it. He's the transporter. So Red Faction 2. I had this on PlayStation 2 back in the day, and I remember it fondly, but having played this campaign, it's a downgrade. I'm sorry, it's a downgrade from the first game. The bonus objectives are an interesting thing intended to add depth, but all they do is force you to redo le sections of the level over and over again if you miss them. Like, some of them are contextually dependent. If you don't defend the target or whatever, you... And, and you need a list, because they're not, like, actually shown on a screen. So, if you didn't have a guide, it would just be a nightmare. And then, of course, there's the no-autosave, and you have the levels divvied up into these little snippets. And that's meant to be your autosave, but... Oof. I'd rather... I'd rather have a quick save. I probably said quick save the star. I'm mixing up words occasionally. Please bear with me. We seem to be experiencing biotechnical difficulties. But yeah, a quick save function. You, you don't have one. Because the sections of the level are so short, and then you get an auto save at the end. But all in all, this whole game is aggressively short. I mean, I got ten videos cutting out most of the times I died, which wasn't often. In the first Red Faction, granted I was playing that on normal. And here, even cutting out the parts that I died... Well, it would have been longer if I hadn't cut out the parts that I died. But, yeah. Lance Hendrickson, Jason Statham. Anyway, anyway. um, Oh, see, there it is. John Harris, Shrike E3 demo. That's, that's the original one. I'm glad they actually credited the guy who, like, they didn't use for the final game. You don't, you don't always see that. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes they're just like, yeah, we didn't use them. 
here's the thing. This came out a year, give or take, after the first game. The character models are generally improved. The environments are improved. But the Geomod was downgraded. The weapons don't look any better. And gameplay-wise, like I said, the, chain, the decisions made were questionable. Got no quick save. You've got this weird uh, division... You got this weird division between the levels. Because there's 11. And then each one, like, splits into smaller sub-levels. And th that's your save checkpoint. Like, that's it. That's your save checkpoint. Now, I have it here for the sake of inclusivity, because I played it a lot. Like I said, I played the multiplayer. Which was local. And it had this cool thing with the bots where they would gain experience points and you could level them up. And you'd eventually have the bots be actually better than the players. Like, they start with 150 health instead of 100. And they deal more damage. Like, they have a multiplier applied to their damage. But the single player in this is... Meh. And the PC version here uh, doesn't even have, like, online multi. It's just bot matches. That's enough of soap pot going off. So, yeah, um, Red Faction 2. Would I recommend it? Uh, I, I got this as part of a bundle with all the other Red Faction games. I would not suggest getting it on its own merit. I would say get the original Red Faction on its own merit. It, for the time, it was revolutionary. And honestly, you're probably getting more content than you are in the second game. And less aggravation. But yeah, Red Faction 2 does not come with a recommendation. Besides, like I said, it thematically doesn't feel anything like Red Faction. You're not on Mars. The whole Red Faction thing was on Mars. Why are they on Earth? It doesn't make sense. It feels like the Quake Syndrome. It feels like they were making a completely different game with a completely different setting and backdrop, and then... When they couldn't decide, like, what to call it or what to make of it, they just were uh, it's Red Faction. It's Red Faction 2. And the reason I say that is because Quake 2 was never originally going to be Quake. But when they couldn't settle on how to, to launch it as an intellectual property, they're like, well, we'll just call it Quake 2. Because Quake was hugely popular in 3D, and that will make associations in people's minds. And, you know, bip bop boom and it'll be done. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I know this is um, pointless for those coming to this long after it airs, but I'm not sure if I'll be following this with Red Faction Remastered, uh, Gorilla Remastered, because while these two ran aggressively short, that one, by comparison, is full of busy work it would take forever. And I'm trying to fit this all in a month, so make of that what you will. Um... I hope everybody is staying happy and healthy out there. And I hope you'll return for the subsequent installment or just watch something else that I've produced. My, my playlist library of, of things I've LP'd continues to grow. There's probably something in there that might pique your interest. And as always, dear viewers, fare thee well.